Hello again guys, I got a very interesting video for you today. A company reached out to me and asked if I wanted to try out this projector. This is the TouchJet Pond Smart Touch Projector. Now before we get started, I will admit, I have not used a home projector ever. I used projectors back when I was in school. I've used projectors at various jobs over the years, but they're all professional high-end projectors. So I honestly don't know what to expect about this. Just looking at the front of the box, you can see it has Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, USB, and HDMI. And there's an Android app for it on Google Play. As far as the sticker on the side, it says TouchJet Pond 1080p wireless projector. But from what I read online, it does not do 1080p. It can support 1080p, but its native resolution is 1280 by 800. Here on the side, you can see some specifications. And the one thing that really jumps out at me, one of the things that was really interesting about it is it runs Android. So it's a projector that runs Android, but the problem is it is Android version 4.4. And if I had to guess, it's probably never going to see an update, but we'll see. But yeah, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, micro USB, mini HDMI, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, 16 gigs of built-in storage. It has a built-in rechargeable battery. That's another one of the things that was very interesting for me about it. In addition to being a projector, a portable projector. So you can take it anywhere you want to go. And it has a built-in speaker. Now again, the second downside, potential downside to this, brightness, powered brightness, up to 80 lumens. 80 lumens is not extremely bright. Now, out of something this size, I would not expect it to be hugely bright, but let's just hope that it's actually visible in a room that has a little bit of light. And as the whole touch name implies, it's got styluses included with it that help to turn whatever surface you project it onto into a touch surface. So I'm really curious to see how that works too. Let's dig in, I've talked too much. Inside the box, there's another box. I wonder if there's another box inside of this one. This is actually the projector case, and it just became very difficult to see, but that's okay. Get it all unzipped. This will be very nice for traveling with it. It has a little carrying handle and everything on it. So, got it open. Got some foam in here in the middle. User manual. Probably loads of great information in there. Micro USB to full-size USB adapter. Six AAA batteries. Two styluses. Presumably what the AAA batteries go to. The remote. Again, presumably where some of the batteries go. A mini HDMI to full-size HDMI adapter. Convenient. A cardboard box with some power accessories in it. There we go, it just snaps in. And I was kind of curious why this would need a separate adapter that has an actual barrel plug on the end of it. It's because it outputs five volts at three amps. Now granted, if they remade this, if they wanted to make a new version of it, they could probably do it with USB Type-C, which would be very, very cool. And of course, newer versions of Android would be even better. So hopefully there'll be a model version two because this is not gonna be great. This is not gonna be good for traveling aside from the fact that you can actually keep it in the case. Speaking of which, the last thing in the case is the projector itself. And I'm gonna just immediately say it. That's really cool. Look how small that projector is. Not quite as small as I think they showed it on the box, but that's small, that's palmable. So taking a quick look around it, touch dead on the top. It's got a matte white finish. On the back you have USB port, HDMI port, but it's mini HDMI. 3.5 millimeter audio out and your DC in. On the side, I would assume this is your power toggle. You just slide it forward and I guess hold it for a second to get it to turn on. And a little rotating knob. I probably ought to look up what all these things are before talking about them. Yeah, it is what I thought it was. So you have your power slider and this is your focus knob. And actually as you turn that focus knob, I don't know if you can see that in the camera, you probably can't, but I can see it adjusting here locally when I try that. So that's very cool. But there's the front with a little lens and potentially the fan. More fan grills around the side and what appears to be a status LED. Tripod mount on the bottom with again more fan area, more fans just all around. That's gonna be one of the key components to this is that it's gonna have to have a fan running to keep itself cool. I'm kinda curious to see how hot this is gonna get. As you know, I'm really curious to see if it has any power in it. So let's see if I can turn it on. No such luck. Back to the manual. Well, I'm guessing either the battery is dead or maybe it just needs to be powered the first time. It says to plug it in everywhere that I've looked. So I'm gonna plug it in first. It does say here in the manual though, built in 4,000 milliamp hour, 3.7 volt LiPo battery with 120 minute lifespan. But let me plug it in. All right, a few seconds later, I've gone ahead and plugged everything in and kind of swept the desk clear. Give it a little hold. I do see the red light here on the side. You can kind of see that. And I held it for a couple of seconds and the LED on the other side turned green and I can hear a little fan running. And actually you can see there the light is coming on. It is starting to shine. So so it is displaying things, so that's very cool. I'm gonna have to move things around and, and get everything set up again. So I've had to make a few adjustments, had to darken everything up so that you could actually see what's going on. It's actually very easy to see this in the room though. I've got the bright lights on, so that's giving you a pretty accurate sample as to how this will look in a brightly lit room. I'll continue testing it, of course, but I've got batteries in my stylus and my remote, and I'm at an end user license agreement. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to do anything. I apparently just put it in standby mode. I hit the power button on the remote. Hit it again, comes right back up, and I'm able to navigate through the license agreement using the up and down buttons on the remote. So let me see if this stylus works. You're supposed to be able to power it on by flipping the switch like that. Oh, I was able to check it. That's a plus. And I'm able to scroll up and down using this. And then, boop. Oh, I don't even have to be, I don't have to actually touch it. That's pretty nice. 
So there's info here about name and address, time and date setting, Wi-Fi setting. We're going to want Wi-Fi. So we'll just boop on that. Wi-Fi is turned off. We're going to turn it on. Oh, that's really nice. Just using the stylus as sort of a mouse pointer, all you got to do is block the screen, and wherever you're blocking with the tip of the pointer is what it's actually going to try to use. I just turned Bluetooth on by accident there and back off. Gonna wanna be closer to it, I think. That's actually working surprisingly well. Though it appears you've got the left click and that's about it. So this is not a button, this is a slider. Let's see if I can get on Wi-Fi now. And testing for a password, that's gonna be super fun. Done. And then connect. And it says we are connected right here. We do have Bluetooth as an option. It does see the Bluetooth devices here in the house and I can hold this and go up and down to see the different ones. Very nice. Go ahead and hit the home button there. And actually, I should be able to use the remote for a lot of this now. So that's all the stuff that you get on your home screen. So you have an APK installer, browser, calculator, calendar, clock, dev tools, downloads, uh, eHome Media Center, email, explore. This is a lot of stuff to have on a projector. That's an interesting layout. I wonder if there's multiple pages. Let's try this. Oh, it goes up and down. So swipe up. So now you've got Google Maps. Why would you need Google Maps on a projector? I don't understand that. Mighty Meeting, not familiar with that. Music, people, it does have the Play Store. That's very interesting to see. Quick Office, settings, video, Wi-Fi display, YouTube, Netflix, and Hulu. I gotta see it. Add a Play account. Oh, and it says SD card prepared. SD card is prepared and ready for using. Does it actually have an SD card slot that I missed somehow? Well, nothing came up when I clicked on it, so I'm gonna assume no. And while that is a bit of a chore to type on, this stylus actually does work quite well. I'd be curious to see, I'm gonna have to see if pressing on the tip does anything. So wherever you've got selected, yeah, the tip acts as a left mouse button as well. So as an example, if I wanted to, I could push on this and do check mark or uncheck. That'd keep me up to date, we'll uncheck that, and then click next. Oh, it's got the option to install the YouTube app. It wasn't actually installed by default. No big deal. I will say I've got minor con- Whoa, stuff going on. I just got an email from Google. Play services error. And if I had to guess, this is wanting to update the Play services, most likely. And the email I got was just notifying me that there was a new sign-in from Android. So it did sign in successfully. I am getting into the Play Store. I'm gonna have to update my Play services. And this is a very, very old layout. Now I did mention this is running quite an old version of Android. It's 4.4, .4, so it is quite a bit out of date. Anyway, it's doing all kinds of things right now. I'm gonna go ahead and try to load up the YouTube app though. And I will say that will explain a lot of the slowness is that it's actually downloading a lot of stuff at the moment. Applications are updating, things are installed. It's updating maps right now. Now one thing I can immediately see about this is that it does not appear to have any sort of keystone adjustment. So you can see here it does kind of taper off at a weird angle because the board I'm actually displaying it on is at a weird angle. I can fix that by moving the board, but if you're projecting onto a wall and you do not have this flat, it's gonna be at a weird angle and you can't really adjust the focus to compensate for that. And you can't adjust the keystone to make it straighten out. So just make sure you've got this flat wherever you've got it. Don't put it in an angle. Let me just go over to my own videos. I'm gonna load up this one. A handheld Windows 10 gaming console quality. 360p is the top that we can do. Paused it there. So yeah, 360p is as high as that's gonna go. So don't go expecting YouTube to play in 4K on this. In terms of the rest of the settings, just going back in here very quickly, like I said, you got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. In more, you've got VPN and tethering and airplane mode. You've got USB settings. So if you wanted to connect it to a PC, you apparently could. You've got sound settings for all your notifications and touch sounds. Display settings for power saving and brightness. Go into brightness. The brightness is actually only at half brightness right now. There's no auto brightness setting, but you can manually change it here. That's as bright as it will go. Actually, that's not bad at all. Yeah, that gets decently bright. Projector mode says front. You can change it to rear, front ceiling, or rear ceiling. So you can say rear, which <laughs> flips it around backwards and makes it difficult to use. Front ceiling, which is going to flip it upside down. Oh buddy, that's difficult. Ooh, that was difficult. Everything was mirrored, so I had to figure it out. And you've got screen scale, so you can actually move things around if you've got it displaying on a screen. Ah, you can kind of adjust the wideness and everything, but you can't really adjust the, the angles of the corners or anything from what I can tell. Still very neat, but there's no back button to get out of this, so I'm gonna have to use the remote. Output interface, LCD, that's my option. You have LCD mode. 
and it does say 854 by 480p 60. That would explain why 360p was the top that I could see. So this is actually displaying at a very, very low resolution. You have battery here. It says we're at 8% in charging. And then just jumping all the way down to the bottom, you see we have developer options already turned on, enabled. About device, model number is TP1, Android version 4.4.2. There's your firmware version, kernel version 3.0, build number, software version. This is a rock chip processor, so if I remember correctly, they don't have the best record in terms of updates, but still, it's an interesting option. And basically, most of what you can do on a relatively low resolution display on Android 4.4.2, you ought to be able to do on this, using this remote and stylus. And now I think it's time to actually hook up an HDMI source. There's a button on the remote here that has a little output thing. It looks like an input changer. I hit the button and it appeared to turn off. My laptop just flashed, and I appear to have confused it, but there you go. You can see the screen of my laptop, and it's actually mirroring, so let me go ahead and see if I can do it as a separate display. And I will say, it's gonna be kinda of hard to see it on there. It actually looks kind of not great. It says 1080p as the scaled display resolution was the default. And if I hit default for display, it takes just a little while. It doesn't actually say the resolution, but it looks a lot better now. And it went back down to 720p which that would be the 1280 by 800 probably, or close to it. But really, it's not that bad. Now, when you're talking about a Retina MacBook Pro, that's gonna be a little bit rough to look at when you're used to looking at a Retina display, but it really could be a lot worse. So yeah, very nice to see that this does work as well as it does. Pull up one of my videos on here and see how it works out. And there you go. Luckily, I did take a little bit of time last night and I set up the camera. All right. So yeah, the audio on that, it's not the best. It's a projector with teeny tiny little built-in speaker, so it's not gonna be great. And actually, you know what, just one more last thing before we wrap up. I wanted to see how the battery works. We are still charging the battery, so it's gonna be taking a little while for that. It's still at about 8%, but check this out. I just pulled the plug on it. It is still running, if you can hear that. And it is projecting, it is showing the display. So that's very, very cool. But it'll do 1280 by 720. It has built-in Android in case you wanna use that way. And if I remember correctly, this goes for about $500 on Amazon. I'll put a link to where you can find it down below if you're interested. I'm actually gonna to attempt to use this when I'm playing D&D and Pathfinder with my group to project down onto the table to use this as a touchscreen display for playing Pathfinder. So I may do an update video on that, just showing how it works, if it does work later on. But like I said, I'll put a link to where you can find this and get more information about it down in the video description. Really interesting, teeny tiny option that I am actually a big fan of so far. Aside from the fact that the Android version on it is very old and will most likely never be updated, it's still a really interesting concept. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for your continued support. Remember to hit the thumbs up down below if you like this and subscribe to receive more videos when they become available. And we will see you again next time. That's actually really cool. An alarm light bulb. Let me turn it off and try to set an alarm for 907. We'll see how it works here in just a minute. While we're waiting, here on the last page, the 